This time, let's study the Word of God with the sermon titled, Valuable Life. It feels like the year 2019 started yesterday, but we're already halfway through the year. Have we been living a valuable life for half a year? Have we wasted half a year in something vain and meaningless without discernment? We should remind ourselves of what we should put value on. It is said that some indigenous peoples of Africa regarded someone with lots of stones as wealthy. When someone had a big stone, he could exchange it for bananas, food, and necessary hunting tools. Through today's standards, we can't understand how they could get some food with a stone. But in their society, stones were regarded to have great value. In that sense, we can understand that just as people in a cultivated society and an uncultivated society have completely different values, the value of the earth and the value of heaven are completely different. Then, let's look back on ourselves whether we're living valuable lives or chasing after vain and meaningless things with all our youth and life, wasting our energy for something that will disappear as time goes by. We need to think about this matter. Do you know, there are some letters that describe life. They say life is BCD. Have you heard about BCD? B stands for birth. C stands for choice. It means that after birth, a person needs to make choices constantly. D, which comes after that, is death. So people say life is BCD. Then, is BCD the end of life? No, there comes E after that. What is E? Eternal life. Death is not the end of everything. After death, there is a fork in the road, one for eternal pain and the other for eternal life. People say life is BCD, but we say it is BCDE. In that respect, we can understand what kind of life is a valuable life. How much do you think God loves us? We can understand through the Bible that God loves us even to the point of death. He devoted His entire life to saving us. He loved us and even risked His own life to save us. Although God was severely ridiculed, persecuted, and crucified by mere creatures, our Heavenly Father and Mother endured all the pain and suffering with a single thought to save us. God earnestly wanted to teach us what kind of life is valuable, right? If you have your own loving children, when you talk about their future, what do you tell them to be? 
Do you teach them to be a thief or robber? No parent would tell such a thing to their child. What do people say to their children? As a parent, you want your children to be respected in society and recommend medical, legal, or teaching professions or encourage them to be leaders, right? What about God? God is our parents. God wants His children to live the most valuable and meaningful life. So what did He say to us? Be my witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. God knows our past, beginning, and end. It is written in Isaiah chapter 46 that God knows the end from the beginning and created the earth and runs it. God made a space where human beings can stay. God asked us to be His witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, wishing that His children would live the most valuable life. God also asked us to be the workers of the new covenant in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We don't know how valuable the life in heaven is because we live on earth with a three-dimensional perspective. Before civilization advanced, indigenous people were happy when they had lots of stones in their houses. What about nowadays? Do you envy anyone with a house full of stones? No, you don't. Stones are everywhere, yet they regarded it as valuable. In the same way, angels in heaven must feel sad when we chase after worldly things. They'll think, why do they value such meaningless things? God wanted us to realize what kind of life is the most valuable in the eternal world. That's why He said, Go and make disciples of all nations and teach them everything I've commanded you. Be my witnesses and the workers of the new covenant. Parents on earth want their children to live the most valuable and precious lives. God is our heavenly parents. That's why they wanted us to live as the witnesses who testify about God and as workers of the new covenant so that we may live the most valuable lives. Did Jesus ever say even once in the 66 books of the Bible, be a doctor, be a lawyer, be a teacher, be a professor, no. Why? The value of the kingdom of heaven cannot be distinguished with earthly standards. God knows what has the greatest value in heaven. That's why it is written in the book of Daniel, those who lead many to righteousness will shine like the stars forever and ever. If people in an uncivilized era saw modern people exchange pieces of paper for bread or houses, what would they think? They would think, they are out of their minds. It's just a piece of paper, which would be nothing once thrown away. 
How can they get a big house or plenty of bread in exchange for such paper? The people in these two different worlds can never understand each other. People on the earth cannot understand people who live for the heavenly kingdom. Life on the earth is short. It is temporary. But what about life in heaven? It is eternal. When people go through B, C, D and enter E at the end, many of them will feel bitter and be full of regret about their life on the earth just as Esau did. Father, did you not leave any blessing even a little for me? Certainly there are people who would speak like this. Everyone, let's not think lightly of the teachings of the Bible. God loves us the most. He was crucified for us. He endured all sorts of despise, ridicule, and mockery and died for us. He is the Creator, but He was persecuted by creatures. He endured great pain for us. When we remember God's great love, we need to think of why God told us to be workers of the New Covenant and His witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. There must be something God wanted to give us. People on earth cannot understand the heavenly life, and angels and spiritual beings in heaven cannot understand the life of people on the earth. The angels will think they devote their entire life to getting a piece of paper. Like that, they're wasting their precious time given by God. Everyone, all of us, must clearly know what life is valuable. That's why there is C, choice, between birth and death, right? What should we choose if we are living today? Why did God ask us to be His witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth? God knows better than anyone that becoming the witnesses of God is the best and most valuable life on earth. Let's take a look at Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 6 reads, So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by His own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be, what? Be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Be my witnesses. All parents want their children to grow up to be great. Then, the life as Christ's witnesses, is it great or not? God knows more than anyone whether such a life is great or miserable. If we were to live forever on the earth, we should live according to the systems on the earth. But everything on the earth will come to an end. Some will finish their lives after 60 years, some 70 years, and some 80 years, some in their childhood, some in their teens, and some in their 20s. They will all face the moment when their clock stops ticking. The clock doesn't work for centuries. Then, we need to set our values and goals on the eternal kingdom of heaven instead of on this temporary world, right?
Now you may not fully understand how valuable it is to save a soul. Some of us might just do the work because God asked us to do that. But actually, it is the work of storing treasures in heaven. God will give you glory over numerous stars in heaven. And your glory will never disappear but shine forever. That's why Jesus asked His children even at His last moment on the earth, be my witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth. All the brothers and sisters of Zion around the world pursue the most valuable life commanded by God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 4. Such confidence as this is ours through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as what? Ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. God is pleased that we become the workers of the new covenant. If there is a chief justice of the Supreme Court or a prime minister or a president in one's family on the earth, they would be proud of it and regard it as an honor. What about in the heavenly kingdom? In this short, earthly, three-dimensional life, the highest position may be president, prime minister, or king. But what is the best position in the eyes of God? We know the answer already. God would not have asked us to live as His witnesses in Samaria and to the ends of the earth if it were not the most valuable position. Now we may not fully know how valuable it is to live as the workers of the new covenant in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Parents keep saying to their children, study hard. During their school days, children don't know why they should study hard. But when they go into society, they come to understand how much their parents love them and why they urge them to study hard. It was not to restrict my liberty, but for my future. Just as they know this, we too will understand when we return home to heaven. Preach hard. You will receive five cities. Those who have two talents will take charge of two cities. Those who have ten talents will take charge of ten cities. Why did God speak through so many parables? Although you preach and save one soul on earth, can you feel like you are taking charge of one city? Even though you save ten souls, do you feel that you receive the authority to rule over ten cities? No, we don't. So what does God want us to have? He wants us to have faith. God asks us to believe that such glory and blessing will surely be given to us. In this world, the city of refuge, God has granted us enough time for us to repent. When people understand the will of God and aim for such a valuable life and then return to the kingdom of heaven, what will they be like? Let's see Daniel chapter 12, verse 1. Chapter 12, verse 1 reads, At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress such as not happened 
from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness will be what? Will be like the stars forever and ever. Through the Bible, God always gives lessons to all people on earth and teaches His will. The main point of God's teachings is to live a valuable life. God always asks us to choose a life that enables us to have good things forever, not to hold on to what is temporary and what we can have now, but must throw away soon. Today, we are living a valuable life. We look up to God. We've chosen the commandments that are acknowledged in heaven. We lift up prayers that God accepts. We are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Now we all follow the path God commanded us to walk so that we can live the most valuable life as God acknowledges. However, some are often tempted and attracted by worthless things, being blinded with temporary things. It's because it seems more realistic and they can feel them in their bones. Rather than living a life for physical things, we should have more hope for eternal things in heaven, though they are invisible. That is why many people say that living on earth is like living as strangers. The life of a stranger is to stay at a lodge for two to three days and leave soon after. The lodge can be neither our eternal home nor a settlement. All say that, but many are living as if they will live here forever. Our true life is in the eternal kingdom of heaven. The heavenly kingdom is right in front of us. We must not cling to the earthly life, but regard the heavenly life as more precious. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith he still speaks even though he is dead. By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to do what? To please God. Among people on this earth, many children are not living up to the will and expectations of their parents. Parents always want their loving children to live the best life in this world. The same applies to our God. God instructs us in many ways, hoping that we can live the best life. Isn't this the truth of the new covenant? God lets us live the life of the new covenant. On the day when the watch of our life stops, as the spring unwinds and the hour hand, the minute hand, and the second hand stop, 
we will enter the eternal world after going through BCD. Then God will say to us, What a valuable life you have lived. What do you think God will say to Noah and to Abraham about their lives? Would God say, Abraham, you have lived such a worthless life. Paul, why were you always flogged? You have lived a terrible and worthless life. Never. God will put them in the most glorious place. Without faith, we can never please God. We cannot understand the heavenly world in the fourth and fifth dimension with our three-dimensional sight and senses. As people don't understand this, God Himself came and left His message. He said, I have put all things here. You must practice at least this until you return to heaven. Everyone, let us once again think over what kind of life is the most valuable on earth. Today, many family members have come here to leave for a short or long-term mission. You have chosen the most valuable life. All people on earth eat, get dressed, and sleep. Whether rich or poor, they live in the same ways. Basically, all life is the same, right? Let's suppose this. A rich man died at 70, and a poor man too died at 70. What's the difference between them? No difference. The rich man had three meals a day for 70 years, and so did the poor man. Rather, the poor man ate comfortably with his belt unbuckled. The rich man once lived comfortably when he possessed less, but as he possessed more, he was afraid of having his things stolen, so he bought a safe. Later, he thinks the safe is not good enough and buys another safe with a better lock. While he is out of home, he still worries that a thief may break in and steal it all. He is always anxious. He is always afraid of having it all stolen. He even worries, what if a fire breaks out and burns it all? He must be anxious throughout his 70 years. Such a life is not better than others. The life of a poor person is the same. Generally, people live 70 to 80 years. All have similar worries and concerns throughout their days. And what about the day when they leave the earth? Alexander the Great said, I came empty-handed into this world and empty-handed I leave. His will was to keep his hand dangling out of his coffin. Why did he ask to do that? When he was born, he intended to possess all the things of the world. But when he left, he realized that he could not take anything with him. So he left this lesson. Do not live in vain like me. We must not just laugh away this matter. All life is like this. So what kind of life should we live on the earth? We must never forget that we are aliens and strangers on earth and must live a life that pleases our God. Let's continue with Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 13. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. What kind of life did they live? And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. They did not live as if they would live on earth forever. By what did they live then? 
by faith Abel, by faith Enoch, by faith Noah, by faith Abraham, and by faith Sarah. Reading the book of Hebrews chapter 11, we can see the forefathers live by faith as aliens and strangers on earth. It means that they all realized that the earthly life is short and temporary. That's why Noah, Abraham, Paul, and Peter had great faith. Those who think that they will live forever on this earth have no hope for heaven and they don't know the value of the kingdom of heaven. They live without repentance. However, the Bible says that we are aliens and strangers on earth. If we travel to a foreign country, we stay there just temporarily and then return to our home. Likewise, this earth is not a place where we will live forever, right? Everyone, on this Sabbath day, let us learn what the most valuable thing in our life is through our forefathers of faith. Keeping in mind that we are only strangers and foreigners living temporarily on this earth. During our life here on earth, let us prepare ourselves to go back to our eternal home so that we can all receive the crown of glory which will shine forever. We don't need to have regrets about our life on this earth because blessings are stored up for us in heaven. No matter how many things we store up on this earth, they can be completely lost or stolen. What about the things of heaven? They are all stored up in heaven. Let us store up many spiritual treasures in heaven. If we remember that we are living as aliens and strangers on this earth and that this earth is only a temporary residence, we can live like our forefathers of faith. On this Sabbath day, God let us realize through the Bible that we can become like Abel, Enoch, Noah, and Abraham who live by faith. According to the teaching of father and mother, let us live the most valuable life. It is good to build a resume on this earth, but let us build a heavenly resume which is eternal. Things on this earth are temporary. We will lose them all when we leave this world. Let's look at verse 13 again. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance. And they admitted that they were aliens and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country. What is it? It is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared a great, holy, brilliant, gorgeous, and beautiful city for them. The Bible says about those who lived with great faith that God is not ashamed to be called their God. I earnestly ask all of you to glorify God by living a valuable and blessed life. Now, let me conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.